What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to mask in Vegas Pro 16. So in the video, I'm going to be going over all of the basics of masking, and also I'll be going into some keyframing with masking as well, and you'll see it is actually very, very simple. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here we are in Vegas Pro 16, and on screen, this is the clip I have right here. So it is stuck footage, time lapse of the Manhattan Bridge in New York City. Pretty simple. So I'm going to be covering everything I can possibly think of in masking and hopefully this will break down everything you need to know with masking. So the first thing to open up the masking you head over to the pan crop tool and then from here once this is opened up you'll see at the bottom it says mask. You need to tick it so it's enabled. Now what masking allows you to do basically you can select a certain area within your video or even image then you can add an effect or you can just crop out your video. So an example of cropping something out, um, for example, I'm just gonna take the Verizon building here and basically crop that out. So you can see that's around what we've got. I can still play it through. The video is gonna be moving, but just that section is cropped out. Now, the way I done that, you can see over to the side, there's a rectangle or square creation tool. And it's probably going to be the main one you're going to be using depending on the shapes you work with. Just select that and then you can always left click and drag out anywhere you want to crop out. And then even if you drop it and you're not happy with the area you need to move it, you can always come back here and drag it across. Say you want the uh, bridge part here. Another useful feature is over to the side here which says move in X only. This keeps us being completely accurate meaning we can't move up and down, we can only move left and right. If you select it again, you can now only move in white only, meaning you can't move left or right, you can only move up or down. So again, a pretty useful feature. And if you press it again, then you get complete control of wherever you want it to go. Now let's say you've made a complete mess of it and you basically just want to reset the mask. Right click and reset mask. It gets rid of any masking you have done and brings you to this. If you made a mistake by resetting the masking, press Control Z on your keyboard and it comes back. Now another feature of masking, as well as selecting an area that you want to show on screen, you can also do this to remove an area. So for example again, I'm going to just crop out the Verizon building. And what you're going to see here is these buttons, so you can have a negative and also a positive mask. If we change it to negative, you can see now we have a black bar where the Verizon building is. That's because we've put the negative mask over that and we've cropped that out. And then again, if you move this over wherever you want to, you can see anywhere this is covering now, this will crop out uh, that section. Another important feature to do with the rectangle and also the oval or circle creation tool. If you wanted to stay in a square, when you are creating the mask, hold shift on your keyboard and drag it out. You can see it's going to stay in proportion. So you're not going to have any issues that way. And just let go and just like that, it's done. Right click reset mask, head over to the oval tool, hold shift and as you can see it'll keep everything in proportion just like this. And then of course we have the anchor creation tool. Now let's say your shape that you want to mask out is not any of the shapes on the side. It's not an oval, it's not a circle, it's not a rectangle, it's not a square. So with that being said you would then head over to this pen tool right here. And if you have a second monitor, this is going to be the best thing for you. Drag this over to your second monitor. The reason I say that is because then you can put it in full screen and you can also look at your video at the same time. If you don't have a second monitor, I still recommend put it in full screen like this, just so you can be more accurate. So to zoom in, you can use the mouse wheel on your keyboard or you can come over here where the zoom feature is. And once again, I'm going to be taking the Verizon building as an example. So I'm going to hold control on my keyboard so I can then drag up at the same time. Now this is where we can mask out the Verizon building. So the first thing we do is left click and you'll notice we lay down a point. Then we go to the next point which will be here. So it's pretty simple for now because it's very basic points. But you can see the more uh, you get to, then I'm just going to skip all that part because it won't be too visible anyway. And then we go into the bridge. So you'll notice we're already zoomed in and we can't go any more down. So what I do, I hold, hold control, drag it down. Remember where our last point was here. Then press control Z again and again. And you can see our points back. 
and we can continue masking it down the building. So you can see it actually gets cut off here, so it makes it a bit awkward. Um, so I would just go back and line it up with this building here and just cut it off. And then if you want to curve it, so you can see there's a slight curve here because of the bridge, all you need to do is left click and drag. And you can see if you drag it up, it creates curve, you drag it down, it creates curve down. So super simple. And I'll leave it there. And then the most important thing, which a lot of people tend to skip, is the fact when you are done masking, you need to link back up to where you first started. So you can see, remember, this was our first point over here. So if I hover over that, you can see all the dots then height highlight in yellow. That means we're going to link everything back up together. Important you do that. Do that. And now it will look like this. You can then come over to the normal edit tool. And we can size this down because now we know we've been accurate. You can see this is what we've got. We've just masked out the building. There's also another thing to point out over to the side here. We have a feather type. Now this is also a good feature. It just softens the edges of both. So you can see it's pretty harsh on everything right now. If we bring up the feather to say uh, 1%. 1.6 you can see it just makes the edges look a lot softer. And this is a very strong feature so you can see. The more you go, the more it does soften out. Now bear in mind we do have this set to both. You can have it on the inside and you can also have it on the outside and you can also just have it set to both. Both is the one I usually recommend just because I think it looks everything a lot smoother. And then once again, if let's say you want to hide that building, then just change it to a negative mask and then this is what we created. This is our mask now blurred or gone. Now, the next thing I'm going to be showing you is how to use the masking tool to blur out or add additional uh, effects to your video on certain objects. So let's say this is masked out now. And what we want to do is right click here where this keyframe is and select copy. Now, bear in mind, you want to do it on the masking option. And then you want to right click and reset mask here. X out of the video, right click the video track and duplicate the track. Then on that top track, you want to head over to the pan crop tool again. And on the masking, right click and select paste. So we've got that straight back. No changes happened just yet. However, if we head over to video effects, and what I will do is add on a Gaussian blur, which is going to blur out the horizon building. And I will add on the medium blur. Remember, it's on the top track. As you can see, it's being blurred out. So notice that this really does make you see how accurate we were with the masking and if this is the case then this is going to be the best thing for you so have your blur or video effect on then head over to the pan crop and simply just adjust it so you can see we have these points all over the sides we can see what we've done wrong as you can see i've dragged that out and dragged that out as well and remember this is also because we did add the feather on it so if we take it off, it probably wouldn't be doing this. But that is it. That is how you would add an effect. I'll just take that off very quickly and we'll try changing the brightness and contrast. So just drag on the default onto the top track. Put the brightness all the way up. As you can see, that's now what we get on that specific building because we mask that out. So we're back to the single video here. And I'm going to be showing you a couple more things coming back to the pan drop tool. And I'm going to add the oval tool. Now I'm going to hold shift and draw out a circle like this. And I'm going to be showing you a bit of animating with the keyframes now. So I'm going to start it off to the side. And essentially what I'm going to do is make this circle go across and down like that. So at the bottom here, we're on masking. You want to have sync cursor checked. And of course, depending on the length of your video and how long you want this effect to last, probably the whole video, and then come to the end. Notice we can't see our video, that's because of course we have the masking on. Go back one keyframe though, then drag this across in the motion you want it to go. Notice another keyframe has been added at the end. Now with this keyframe we can also right click it and we can choose different types of uh, transitions it will make. So smooth and slow are the ones I usually use. Uh, just because it does look really smooth 
and I will X out of that and if I play it through you'll notice this circle is now going to come across our video and simply pan across the entire video just like that. Now not long ago I did show you how to blur out moving objects, it is using the exact same technique, if you want to check that out a link to it will be in the description. But that's it for this tutorial, hopefully it has come across as useful, hopefully it has shown you the basics with masking and how you can use it. A lot of people are put off by masking but you've seen it is very very simple. If there's something I've missed let me know in the comments below and I'll make a tutorial on that. Thank you.